Hello and welcome to Be a Tier German Engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Today we are back with a Draco wrench or better to say four different ones of them and we will go over them one by one by one and explain the intricacies of every single one. We also have normal Dracos as well as glossy Dracos up our sleeve. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are with our first setup. So let's pause the game, let's open the UI and let's take a look. First of all, everything that's on the right side of this Atmos suit dock here, the ladders, as well as the gas vent, the cot, the sink and the laboratory, just ignore all of this here. This is just a tiny little living area, so Bubbles is not going to die because we need to keep her at least a little bit happy so she can take care of our Dracos. But that is just temporary. Ignore all of it. We do not need it. But let's just jump right into this year. First of all, what do we have here? We have Dracos. And before we do anything else, let's take a look at what Dracos are and what Dracos do. So let's open up the database and let's see. First of all, they have a livable range between 15 and 110 degrees Celsius. And as a diet, they have pinch of pepper plants, bomb lilies and mealwood. And it says here they need two units per cycle so they can produce 10,000 grams of phosphoride. And with phosphoride, we can produce fertilizer. So let's see what is going on. So let's get started with our power overlay and let's see what we have here. First of all, of course, we have a power source. What your power source is, is as usual up to you. We have a space heater right here, 120 watts. We have a total of three auto sweepers to cover the entire area, as well as two conveyor loaders. And of course, our shearing station that we will need to shear our Draco so we can actually get some reed fibers off of them. While we are here, let's take a quick look at the dimensions of the entire building. We are 24 tiles long and we are a total of four tiles high which gives us a total of yes 96 tiles when we take a look into our overlay for rooms we can see we are at exactly 96 tiles and we have eight critters in here which is the maximum supported amount for 96 tiles and 96 tiles is the maximum supported amount for a stable the only other thing that we have is a little bit of a conveyor setup right here and I made my life very easy for myself so I just built one singular conveyor rail that drops everything over here. How you split that up is of course once again up to you and you will get two things out of this area here. One is the phosphorite excreted by the Dracos and the other thing will be over here on the right from the shearing station the reed fibers coming from the Dracos. In this particular setup here, I have opted for bomb lilies. So let's take a quick look at bomb lilies and into their database. And bomb lilies, we can take a look at it. Don't need anything other than a temperature range between 35 and 85 degrees and an air pressure of 150 grams minimum of chlorine. And that is important. Let me take a look at our F4 overlay. We can see that we have three tiles of hydrogen here and one tile of chlorine. And this here is relatively easy to accomplish by first pumping hydrogen into this room and then filling it with a little bit of chlorine and the chlorine will automatically sink to the floor eventually. If it is not as perfect as it is here, it's not a big deal. If there are a few tiles of chlorine floating around here on the top, it's no problem. You just want to make sure that no hydrogen gets into the bottom because it will stop the bomb lilies from growing. Dracos are a little bit special. You can already see that they're running around on the ceiling and on all surfaces that are in this room. We will take advantage of that later. But for right now, what is important to know is why do we have hydrogen in here and why do we have chlorine? Chlorine for the bomb lily, I already said that, but we need the hydrogen for the Dracos. And let's take a look at that. I'm going to pause the game once again. Our scale growth right here. It says your change per cycle is 12.5% for a standard Draco that produces reed fibers. But when we look at the ones that are running around on the ground in the chlorine, their scale grows is at 0%. Yes, Draco scales only grow in hydrogen. Thankfully, their livable range makes it very easy for us. When we take a look into our temperature overlay, we're at 54.1 degrees, which is perfectly fine for our critters as well as for our bomb lilies. So that should be perfect for everything that we are doing in here. And the general idea is that our Dracos are running around and spending as much time as possible in the hydrogen. So these three tiles here, as well as all the tiles on the top, and then these three tiles on the right here, here are all covered in hydrogen and they should only come down here basically when they're hungry and eating bomb lilies and how this whole eating mechanic here works we will take a look at in the next setup and here we have our next setup and that is our setup for mealwood 
So why would we use mealwood? Mealwood requires a hell of a lot of stuff. So let's take a look. It first of all requires 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. And then once again, an air pressure of 150 grams minimum made out of either oxygen, polluted oxygen or carbon dioxide. But then on top of that, it also needs 10,000 grams. So 10 kilograms of dirt per cycle to grow. So why exactly would we do that? Let's take a look at one of our Dracos right here. And when we go down to egg chances, we can see that this glossy Dracula egg chance is at 31%. Where, when we go back to the other one, Right here, this Draco right here, for example, has a glossy Draculate egg chance of 2%, and this is not going to increase as long as they eat bomb lilies. So this setup here is only meant for normal Dracos. You will not get any Draculate eggs out of it. And back up here in our Millwood area, as long as we feed a Millwood, their glossy Draculate egg chance will slowly but steadily increase so we can get more glossy Draculates out of it. So what exactly do we do different up here? You can see we have a lot more tiles in here, or better to say two more tiles here in the middle, because we don't need to heat this area. Quite to the contrary, we need to cool it down, because as we just saw, the Millwood is not very happy about 30 degrees. So we actually need to cool it. I have not done it in this setup because you should know by now how to cool something. Usually you have some somewhere a steam turbine or whatever close by or your normal water supply. There are a million things that you can do to cool this thing here down to below 30 degrees. It's really pretty simple and you can watch literally any of my other explainer videos to see how to cool something. The only other difference are those two conveyor chutes right here and those conveyor chutes here just to get some dirt in. For example, like this. So we have some dirt laying on top here, we put it into the conveyor loader, the conveyor loader spits one out to the right, spits one out to the left, and then just eventually drops it down here to the floor. And it is that simple. And then whenever our mealwood here needs more dirt, our auto sweepers will take care of it. Where exactly your dirt comes from is of course once again up to you. But let's take a look how those dracos here eat. Maybe we can find one. And right here, I was able to pause the game right in a moment when the Dracos are eating. So let's take a look. They always eat exactly what's behind their head. So in this case, it will be this mealwood right here at 71% and this mealwood here also at 71%. Okay, that is quite a coincidence, but I'm not complaining about it. So let's see what happens. They eat it. And when we now look at it, it is down at 34% percent which means they don't eat the entire plant they only eat a part of it roughly about 30 something percent so we can eat three times off of one fully grown mealwood per draco which means that all of this mealwood right here is way too much to keep all of our dracos alive we don't need even remotely as many how many did i put in here 18 of them as many as we can fit because all we have here is the shearing station, the grooming station, and the critter drop-off that is needed on top of tiles. But everything else I made millwood. Why did I do that? Well, we have three options of what we actually can do. First of all, we can do nothing. That's what I choose to do here because I have an unlimited amount of dirt and I don't really have a use for the millwood. Therefore, I just put it in here and called it a day. You could do that. I would not recommend that. At the second option, we can just reduce it. And you can do the math yourself. Or you can just do it by trial and error. As soon as you see somebody be hungry, you should probably put in one more. Or third of all, what is what I would recommend? Actually get some food out of it. Yeah, that's right. You can just set these here to auto harvest. I have the auto harvest turned off. So our Ellie over here can actually take care of nothing but our Dracos. But we could harvest it. There's no harm in it. Because it does not need to be at 100% for our Dracos to be happy. So all these here that are at 100% we could is easily harvest and our Dracos will still be happy. That is what I would recommend. That's what I would do myself. So let's move on to the next one. And here we have the next setup. And this one here is quite intricate. And I did not build this myself. Credit where credit is due. I found it on Reddit by a user named Helagoth. Elagoth, thank you very much. I'm going to link the post down below so you guys can actually see the original. But this here is what I found and I like it quite a lot. So let's go over it really quickly. First of all, in our F2 overlay, what do we have in here? We have two auto sweepers right here, a conveyor loader in the middle and the shearing station. And then the exact same thing on the right side. All this here is connected by a pneumatic door as an inlet, as well as a pneumatic door between the two stables. And yes, these are two stables. We have one here on the right and one here on the left. And I separated out the Dracos, which you don't have to do. You can literally mix and match. It does not make a difference. We have our glossy Dracos right here and we have our normal Dracos right there there and all of them are pretty happy about how they are doing in here the thing is the area of our hydrogen is crazily increased when we take a look in our f4 overlay you see all this hydrogen that we have here and only this tiny little bit of carbon dioxide here on the floor yeah our dracos are spending a lot more time in the hydrogen area and therefore growing their scales which is perfect 
Also, what is nice about this room design here is this little gap here in the middle because Dracos can jump this gap. So if this Draco is, for example, right here and needs to go to the grooming station, it does not have to walk all around here. It can just come down jump the gap and it is right at the grooming station which makes it very very nice and very efficient to get to the two different stations and still leave them in the hydrogen as much as possible but next of all i want to talk about glossy dracos because since we have them finally here we may as well take a look at them so what is the difference for them their comfort range is slightly different it is between 25 and 60 and the livable range is between 5 and 80 so let's compare that on the top here to our normal dracos 15 to 110 compared to 5 and 80. It is still pretty much the same range. No, only the lows and the highs are a little bit different, so it shouldn't matter too much, but that is just something that I want you to keep in mind. And the other difference is the diet. It eats mealwood or bristle blossoms. We don't want to work with bristle blossoms, at least I don't, because the mealwood is much easier. The only reason you would want to go with bristle blossoms is if you're low on dirt. That's what I would say. You can always put a lamp right here and a lamp right there, which should then give all this here light to put in some bristle blossoms, make those farm out your hydroponic farms and put in some water pretty easy and straightforward if you want to go with bristle blossoms i will still keep going with mealwood because usually dirt doesn't have too much uses for how i play the game at least but that is once again fully up to you for your dracos the other difference is the scale growth and you can see here the scale growth is at 33.33 percent as long as they're in hydrogen where our normal dracos are at 12.5 percent so we can literally every three cycles get plastic off of our glossy dracos and that's what makes them in my opinion pretty powerful because it is a more or less free source of plastic all you need is a little bit of food for those things and a little bit of dupe labor to actually get them sheared and groomed Last thing I want to take a quick look at is the conveyor rail overlay. It's once again pretty simple and straightforward. At least that's how I built it. We're coming down with our conveyor rail. We're coming all the way to the right and I'm dropping everything that comes out right here. And here in the bottom, once again, this here is just to put in some dirt. So let's do that real quick so you can see what that looks like. And here we have some dirt coming in once again here from the bottom left. We are just putting it in here, going to the right, going to the left, back and forth and back and forth and just dropping some dirt. And when we take a look at our auto sweeper, it can reach every single one of those tiles, including the dirt. So whenever our meal wood here needs something, our auto sweeper will take care of it. Therefore, there is not even a door here. Our dupes cannot even enter because there is no reason for them with this setup. They don't ever have to come down here, which is perfect. And this here is our third setup, so let's take a look at our fourth and last. And here we have our fourth setup, and this here is the starvation setup, so let's take a look at it. And first of all, we have here a room completely filled with hydrogen. There's nothing but hydrogen in here because, well, there is no food in here, hence the starvation part of it. When we take a look, it is 72 tiles big, but it literally doesn't matter because I have a total of 50 critters in here. Yes, 50 of them are in here because it literally doesn't matter. 25 glossy dracos and 25 normal dracos and we will get both our normal reed fibers as well as our plastic out of them and that is exactly what the system here is for first of all it is important to note that this here is not self-sustaining when we click on any of those dracos here and we just take a look at the reproduction we are at 1.11 percent per cycle and they live about 37 cycles without being fed i believe or 36 somewhere in the general area so we will get several times shearing out of it but we will not get any eggs out of it. Therefore, we need to come with our eggs from somewhere else. And we take a look back up here. Just for reference, this Draco right here has a reproduction rate of 11.11 per cycle, which means each one of those eight Dracos in here lays one egg roughly every eight to nine cycles, somewhere in that general area. In our glossy Dracos, when we take a look at that, the exact same thing. So it is way more than we will ever need in here because they have a lifespan of 150 cycles. We are going to have a lot of excess eggs that we don't know what to do with it and that's where this setup here comes into play everything that we hatch we're just gonna throw into this room the good thing is that everything that hatches is automatically tamed why is that important because when we take a look here when it is already tame and we take a look at the scale growth it is at 33.33 percent i believe there is one critter in here out of those 50 that is not tame so let me take a look at that one and then we can do a direct comparison 
And right here I have found it. This is a glossy Draco and it is still wild. The scale growth is at negative 25% and the reason for it is once again that it is wild. So a total scale growth of 8.33% per cycle. That is not a lot compared to the 33% that we get out of it once it is tamed. So we want to have all these here tamed. They will live a little bit shorter but at the same time grow their scales a hell of a lot faster. And that is what we are aiming for. We are trying to get as much scales out of them as we can that is the end goal so let's run this here let's take a look at it once again i have up here two conveyor loaders as well as two auto sweepers and the auto sweepers have a range that they can pick up everything that's coming off the shear station as well as the meat whenever they die eventually and then in our conveyor overlay we can see what i built here i have a conveyor rail element sensor right here and another one right there hooked up to two conveyor shutoffs and then i have three conveyor chutes and this is just as, as an example how you could potentially sort out your different materials the first one is set up to plastic so if it is plastic it comes into here and it falls down on the first tile the second one is set up to reed fibers so if it's not plastic it goes to the top and if it is reed fibers it goes straight through and falls into the second tile and if it is neither of the two which there's only one option left and that would be meat it comes all the way through and falls onto the third tile and that is how simply you could sort out your different materials as long as you have eggs coming in from different farms, you will never have a problem with the setup right here. It will just get the job done. As long as you have a dupe nearby, that can actually shear them all. This here is, of course, a complete overkill. It will take a long time until you have actually 50 critters in here. But that is just to show off that it literally doesn't matter. The debuffs of Glum and Overcrowded do not matter in the least. But these four setups here is all I have for you today. So if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. You know it. I'm always happy to hear from you. And also, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to join the Discord link in the description down below. And with that, I say thank you and peace.